Cool, so uh, compiling an FPGA is a pretty specific task, and obviously you can ramp up your uh, computing power to, t to do that. But as we talk about these uh, new grand engineering challenges like energy, whether it's the grid or, or wind energy or structural health monitoring and things like that, it's a whole different type of application. And what we've seen is the n whole model of Acquire, Analyze, Present uh, doesn't make sense on a single computer. The challenge is really about bringing all that data together for analyzing and making conclusions. And the cloud can really be that place where it comes together. So what are we doing uh, for these kind of applications? So we're uh, working with, uh, with uh, building services on top of Microsoft Windows Azure to store, manage, and access measurement data. Uh, so by utilizing the cloud in this way, National Instruments can handle the, uh, the data management piece and let you focus on your measurements. So it looks like we have our own uh, mini wind farm over there. Why don't you tell us about our demo? That's right. Uh, so we've got a, a wind turbine here, and we're taking several measurements, uh, such as uh, power and wind speed. Um, and we're uh, also simulating similar measurements at, at different wind farms across the globe. We're taking all of this data, and we're pushing it up to the cloud uh, via web service API. So let's look at uh, where the data ends up then. Yeah, so we've got a portal that Aaron's going to log into, um, and he's going to go in and pick a, um, a location around the world. You see it on the map there. He's going to pick a turbine, um, and he can look at a particular measurement and a subset of time. That graph that you're seeing there, has been pulled, the data has been pulled down out, out of the cloud, and he can export this uh, to his desktop for analysis. Okay, so I get it. Our hardware is sort of changing where it can, you, you, in the future you might just buy it, turn it on, and it's going to pump data to the cloud. And then this is a, a portal where you can view the data, but what if I need to do something more custom? I need to in, put more into this application. Well, John, so in the future our customers will be able to build custom web applications like this one that runs in a web browser using Labby Web UI Builder that we saw a little while ago. However, currently we can build custom desktop applications using just regular old LabVIEW. In fact, let's take a look at a custom UI that I put together uh, using LabVIEW 2010. This is geared more towards wind farm app, uh, monitoring from a global perspective. As you can see here, uh, I was able to geotag my locations with longitude and latitude co coordinates and easily overlay them on this map so I can get a quick visual representation of my whole system. Okay, so now this is a desktop app and we're just tapping into the data that's in the cloud. And I see you've added some status indicators there. What's that about? That's right. So based on the information I'm getting back from the cloud, I'm determining the status of each turbine at the location and changing the color of the pushpin accordingly. As you can see here, let's take a look at Buenos Aires, which is yellow. You can see that one of the turbines is in a warning state, so I've changed that to a yellow pushpin. I can click on the pushpin for more information, click on the specific turbine that's having issues, and graph, you know, last day's worth of data over here on the right side for some quick reference. Okay, what other things have you added into your, your demo here? Well, one of the big uh, requests from our customers is the ability to compare data from different uh, turbines around the world, different locations. So since all the data is stored in a central location in the cloud, it's easy to pull back data from certain locations. That's for even certain date ranges. So we can take a look at, say, a turbine here in Austin and a turbine in Aachen, Germany, and with just a couple clicks, graph the data on the same graph so we can compare them to each other easily. All right, that's a very cool UI, but, you know, that's kind of a day one demo. Very fancy. I like it. But here on day two, we want to get down and dirty a little. So we keep talking about reading and writing data to the cloud. That sounds kind of complicated. How do you really do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Since all the data is served up to the cloud and retrieved to the, from the cloud using web services, we've wrapped that around in an easy-to-use API that follows the same sort of open action close a, uh, paradigm that our LabVIEW users are already used to using. So as you can see here, all we need to do to do a simple temperature measurement is just use this open handle VI to open a connection to the cloud and then use some, you know, initialization VIs to set up you know, authorization as well as how we want it to be published to the cloud. In this case, we're creating a location and then a turbine within that location and a specific measurement to that turbine. Then all we need to do is wire up our data to this put data VI that automatically publishes the data to the cloud for us. Then when we're done, just call the close handle VI that closes the connection to the cloud. Pretty straightforward. All right, so we've got a cloud interface toolkit, it looks like. <laughs> well, now. You're all cloud developers, too, now, by the way. Now, so let's review. We looked at the uh, compile farm uh, from Charles. That is a shipping product, part of LabVIEW 2010. Uh, and then the extension of that into the cloud is, is in beta, or will be in beta very soon. And then the idea of pulling all this data into the cloud 
for larger scale applications is just that, a cool idea that we're working with very closely with Microsoft. And we look forward to uh, an early access program in the future. Thanks, guys. Thank you.